Hey guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. In today's video, I want to talk about the new Great Hall that they added when they added Live Arena. Of course, I'm talking about the area bonuses. Great Hall is now split into two parts. We have Affinity Bonuses, which is basically the original Great Hall, which you upgrade from Classic Arena Medals. You can see I'm still waiting for them to give us something to spend our gold medals on once you finish upgrading the Affinity Bonuses. And then, of course, we've got this new area bonuses, which is a bit different from affinity bonuses. I'm going to go through exactly how it's different, what the main changes between the two, and more importantly, where you should put your initial crests and some of the risks and rewards that you have when you upgrade certain areas. So let's first talk about what is what is the area bonuses. So we know with affinity bonuses, you upgrade the medal. Every champion across all parts of the game gains a bonus to either HP, attack, defense, crit damage, resistance, or accuracy. In the instance of HP, attack, and defense, it is ba based off the bonus on the base stats. So if you've got a 1,000 base stats, you get 20% more of the 1,000, not the total stats. It's the same thing with crit damage is additional, so it just adds on top, as, as well as resistance and accuracy. So that's the main difference. The, the, the main stats are based off base stat, and the other stats are on top. Now, with the area bonuses, we actually have more stats available to us. So again, we've got the HP, attack, and defense bonuses. They're all based off the base stat. But now we've got ignore defense, which is just going to be a bonus ignore defense. So if you've got that with other ignore defense effects, they're all additive. So savage, lethal, any skill ignore defenses, they all add together into one sum up to 100%. Once you ignore 100%, you're doing true damage. We've now got speed bonuses. We don't have that in affinity bonuses. In area bonuses, we've got speed up to plus 20. That's a lot of speed. This is additional. It is on top of the final build, on top. Finally, we've got crit damage, resistance, and accuracy, as we always have. However, note there are some differences. Affinity bonuses, it caps at 25% for crit damage. In the area bonuses, it's 30%. AD is the same for the resistance and accuracy. Speed is obviously brand new. We get 20, 20% 20 ignore defense, and the stats are different. So we've basically gained 5% more crit damage. So how do you upgrade the area bonuses? Well, you get medals from the actual live arena that you fight. Live arena opens. You can see it's open right now. If I win a fight, then I can obviously win some medals, uh, some crests here, depending on the tier that I am existing in. So some quirks here, even though there are a substantial amount of bronze upgrades that you're required to do, the way that the ranking system works essentially means that most players who play the game efficiently, regularly, or in any way actually participate in live arena will only ever earn a finite amount of bronze crests and the reason why is because of decay so essentially in bronze you can't lose points for losing you only ever climb so you only ever gain a finite amount of crests because you only gain crests when you win so you only will have a certain amount of wins you need to do to get out of bronze and once you're out of bronze and you've reached it to silver then the natural daily decay which means if you don't play for five days you start losing points means you can't actually decay back into bronze so once you've left bronze you can never earn a bronze crest ever again. Now, if you don't get out of bronze to start with, then you can decay back down, which means you will end up potentially earning a few more bronze crests. But the average player who makes it out of bronze will earn 1,700 bronze crests and no more. You can see on my upgrades here, I have actually spent all my bronze upgrades already and I have earned 100, 200, 300, 400, and then we've got 500, another 800, 300 there. So that's five, six, seven, 800, and then 1600 there as well. I have also spent them on here. So you can see that I've only earned 1700 bronze crests. So they've created a system where in essence, you can only spend bronze crests to upgrade 3.2% of the total bronze crest upgrades you require to upgrade. People will know when you're upgrading these arena medals, there is an exchange rate between bronze, silver, and gold crests in here you can find that information where you can go down you can see that one gold medal is worth two silver medals one gold medal is worth four bronze medals and one silver medal is worth two bronze medals well that does not exist in these area bonuses if i want to spend and upgrade anything it's the same amount there is no exchange rate the only difference is i can't upgrade a silver reward with bronze and i can't upgrade a gold with silver or bronze outside of that 
they're all one to one to one. So it doesn't truly matter that you can only earn 1700 bronze met crests. It's just a bit baffling to me that we've created a system that essentially I can only ever earn 3.2% of the crests required to actually upgrade the bronze crest. It kind of makes the whole tier system a bit pointless because in reality, the only things that truly matter is am I earning gold crests to upgrade gold upgrade awards? Like I, I can't upgrade this until I physically start earning gold crests which is probably never going to happen for the next four months based on the way that the, the ranking system is growing anyway that was just a little side note so the th the key thing to take away here is it is a one to one to one exchange so one silver is worth one bronze one gold is worth one silver there is no difference where you spend those it's not less or more efficient to upgrade bronze with silver or gold with silver it's all going to be the same the only thing i would take note of is if you can't sustain gold, if you get up to gold, at the moment it's very unrealistic for anyone other than big mega krakens to be in gold. If you can't sustain that level, then you may want to hold your gold medals back to try and upgrade your gold upgrades rather than use gold medals on silver upgrades where silver might be more accessible. It's the only note I would have here. Otherwise, just upgrade them with whatever medal count. It doesn't really matter. Now, some things to take in note. We've got speed as a stat. Speed is very, very dangerous to upgrade. It could break your speed terms. This is the big word of warning part of this video that I want to get out. Be careful what you upgrade when it comes to speed. It might break things and cause problems. Let me give you an example. You've got four primary dungeons here. This is the difference with area bonuses. It's not all areas. We'll talk about which areas they've selected and why they've selected them and various different things after this bit. But essentially, you've got the four primary dungeons. I call them primary dungeons. It's because where you earn artifacts. We've got Ice Golem, Finite, Dragon's Lair, and Spider's Den. All of them can gain plus 20 speed. Now, in the end game scenario where you've got all of these upgraded, it's not really a problem that you've got speed in these areas unless you're using a champion in a speed tune that doesn't require the speed or something of that nature in an area that isn't covered by these area bonuses. But if you're using, for example, in Dragon's Lair, a Seer, at a speed tune that requires her to be within a 10 speed range and then you go and upgrade say 20 speed in finite for whatever reason you can't then really speed tune your seer because your seer is going to get 20 speed whether you want it or not which means you might be in a situation where you can gear your seer to get enough for the speed rotation for the finite but then in Dragon's Lair, you are not in the speed tune anymore and you can't find that 20 speed until you upgrade the 20 speed. So my word of warning, be careful with your speed upgrades. Either do it linearly or don't do it at all for the time being. Because if you upgrade Fire Knight only, it might break your spider or dragon or your ice golem teams and you can't fix it then because you actually can't take the speed away. You can't opt out of this area bonuses. You can't say don't use the area bonus. Once you've upgraded it, you've got it. It's there. It's always going to be there. I would actually say in terms of priority listings that actually speed is probably not as important. So let me give you my advice and guidance on what specifically what I'm focusing on, but what I think you should definitely focus on. You can see we've got these areas here. Potion keeps you ignore for the time being. They're very cheap, but who cares? Nobody really cares about that. I can do potion keeps with any five star champion. And if you're in the early game, you're probably not even doing live arena. So this is really for a mid onwards. People who have started doing live arena, people who are in the late and end game, they don't need to care about potion keep upgrades. I have no idea why we've got this area here. Then you've got the four dungeons. I would say the only dungeon you really care about is Finite. It's the only one you care about. And the reason behind that is to beat the Ice Golem Peak, if you're doing normal mode, you are doing a poison strategy nine times out of ten. You are not doing a, you know, beat up the boss so ignore defense is irrelevant you're not doing a i need lots and lots of damage so crit damage is irrelevant accuracy requirements for normal is only 250 accuracy your affinity bonuses will probably be enough it'll help but it won't be required these stats here as well give very little bonuses that i wouldn't actually worry about i mean 20 percent of defense is very small on a 1000 defense it's 200 defense it's not even a ring it's not major i wouldn't worry about it when it comes to Dragon's Lair, again, how are you beating the Dragon's Lair boss? You're either doing max HP, which, okay, crit damage and ignore defense can help, but it's not essential. Or you're doing poisons, which means crit damage and ignore defense are irrelevant. With Spider's Den, if you're doing sort of Spider 20 farming, you're doing max HP nuke, but generally you don't need the crit damage bonus. If you're doing 25, you're doing AOE HP burn. You don't want the extra damage because you don't want the Spiderlings dying too quickly. 
And if you're doing a Spider 10 hard, then most of them rely on a very specific amount of damage output at very specific times. So again, do you really need or want them? Probably not. Now, Fire Knight is the only one that probably has relevancy because killing the boss is actually direct damage. So ignore defense and crit damage is important. And more specifically for Fire Knight hard, speed. Speed is in Fire Knight hard will be where you want that speed upgrade because 20 speed is a big saving. It is around about 6, 12, 18. It's about 3.2 substat speed rolls. So it's worth it in Finite for Finite Hard specifically. That's what I would say here. And also for Finite Normal 25, the Ignore Defense will help you kill that boss quicker. Now, what I would say most people will put most of their attention to first is Hydra. Hydra is where all of these substats actually help you a lot. You normally need around about 350, 340, something of that nature of accuracy. The extra 80 Axie will help you a lot. You need to resist the Head of Mischief. You need to resist certain other effects like the Poison Head. 80 resistance here will help you tremendously. You need to deal damage to heads, crit damage, max H enemy max HP damage. These crit damage bonuses will help you get to a higher tier of damage with less actual commitment into damage stats so you can put more stats into survivability and keep your max hp nukers alive extra speed the faster you go the less the, the heads can take a turn the more actions you can take before you get consumed it all makes sense so far we're four for four that are really valuable ignore defense hydra has six thousand defense it's high-end content ignore defense will help you tremendously so already you can see that five stats for hydra is very valuable these are the stats then i would call a luxury that I would not put any of my effort into unless I had spear crests. I would never put much value specifically into these attack and defense. HP is more valuable than the other two just because you get more more value from it. I wouldn't put much value into these three. I pretty much would say your first area of focus is going to be these ignore defense to the right in Hydra. And there's a lot of crests you need to upgrade, right? It's going to take you a while to even get to the gold cap first. Now, for me, I play a lot of clan boss. I do a lot of clan boss content. I enjoy clan boss more than anything else. So because of that, I've decided that I wanted to upgrade the clan boss speed first. Because as with anything, if you're messing around with speeds, specifically in clan boss, where speed tuning is such an art, such an important thing, if you're going to do it, do it in one go. And that's what I decided to do here. I decided to basically do all of my speed upgrades for clan boss. So if I'm going to rebuild my clan boss team, I can rebuild all the champions in one go. It doesn't particularly matter if I get more crit damage. It doesn't particularly matter if I get more ignore defense. Accuracy will matter once I start getting up to these greater numbers. But in the first focus, I was like, get the speed, do it in one go. That's my advice with clan boss. If you're going to upgrade clan boss speed, try and do it as quickly in one go so you can do the rebuild in one go as well, rather than go, okay, well, I've got plus six. Now I need to rebuild. Okay, now I've got plus 10. Now I need to rebuild. That's just going to make it wasting silver and lots of other things. So for me personally, I'm focusing on clan boss. I'm going to get the speed and the crit damage up to the maximum as quickly as I can. And then I'll put all my effort into Hydra. And then probably I will start looking at Fire Knight. I will not bother with anything else after that. I don't really need anything for Spider. I already one-shot Spider 20 and Spider 10 hard doesn't want damage. I already use the Dragon to kill itself in hard Dragon, basically using Stoltus and Reflect and those sorts of things. And for normal, I just max HP nuke it with the Armiga. So maybe crit damage could be useful in the future or some ignore defense, but at really it's quite low value. And for Ice Golem, again, we don't want to do damage. We don't want to activate the Ice Golem passive. So actually adding damage is a bad idea. Speed will help eventually, but probably again, it's one of those situations of I'm going to have to do them linearly. I'm going to need to do all of these at one go, because if I break it, then it's going to break the speed tune. And it, you can't also, here's the other thing, you cannot rely on okay, well, they're all still in the speed team because everyone in the team got plus two because it might push you into a region where you're too fast versus the enemy or you're taking turns at the wrong position because of the way that your tick rate and your break points are with the enemy. So be very careful when you upgrade the speed range. Other than that, I would say 100% your focus should be these Hydra 5, ignore defense to the right. Then if you want to do clan boss speed, do it in one go. Now, just finally, I just want to make a quick comment and note on these stages. And really, this is a, a bit of a public service announcement. Call it what you want. A, a, maybe a, a cry for help. Plerium. The two areas where stats are essential are really high are Iron Twins and Sand Devil. It is the hardest content in the game. It is the content where you require five to 600 accuracy with the exception of Bommel. 
and also Doom Tower, where stats are really difficult. Why are there no bonuses for the Sand Devil, the Iron Twins, and Doom Tower in here at all? I don't care if it's going to cost me more crests. Give me a grade three that is Doom Tower. Give me a grade two that is Sand Devil and Iron Twins. It doesn't matter that the, the area of bonuses then takes so long to do because you're just giving players choices and decisions. 80 extra accuracy is a lot more valuable to me in something like Sand Devil and Iron Twins than in Dragon's Lair or Potion Keeps. I don't care that Potion Keeps are in here. That's fine, whatever. But the fact that you've put Potion Keeps in and you haven't put in Sand Devil, Iron Twins or, Sa or, or Doom Tower is a bit of a mistake, in my opinion. Now, that might be a deliberate mistake because you don't want those areas to be easier to build, perhaps. I don't know. But if you're going to give it to me for the main dungeons, then why aren't you giving it to me for the dungeons that it matters in? That's just my point. I, I, can, I, I accept that these four dungeons are in here. That makes sense. I'm not really sure why Potion Keeps are in here, but I could accept that... You want to give us like potion keeps one but what about minotaur you know if you're doing potion keeps you should do minotaur it feels like we've added these two new dungeons in the game and we've forgotten about them because they don't apply in clan versus clan they don't apply in uh this area bonuses so that's what i would say i like the concept of the great hall with these new area bonuses it gives us a reason to farm for the actual live arena beyond the milestone rewards but I'll be honest, the amount of limitation means that I actually probably don't need that many crests to get what I want out of it because the majority of these areas are not where I need the stats. Sand Devil, Doom Tower, and the Iron Twins are where we really would value the stats. So if we can have those, great. But there you go, guys. That is the end of the video. I just wanted to do a video that kind of summarized the system and where I, my recommendations would apply and also put a bit of warning on those. If you're upgrading speed, be careful how you do it because you might make it impossible for you to speed tune your champion without having the upgrades in the other areas as well. So yeah, that's the warning. So thanks for watching. Good luck with your live arena and your farming of the crest. And I will catch you in the next video.